This is a LEGO spring-loaded shooter. And this is a package full of spring-loaded shooters. Because in this video, we'll be using them to attempt several challenges, like remodeling an entire set, launching them as fast as possible, and much more. Let's get started. This first challenge is pretty simple, but it's gonna get boring by myself, so I teamed up with the homie Garrett. We built a bunch of minifigures using random heads, legs, and torsos, but now they're upset because they have mismatching parts, so they're coming to attack us. We need to defend ourselves. So for this first challenge, whoever takes out the most minifigures within 30 seconds will be declared the winner. Go! Oh, I got one. Let's go. Dang it. Kinda hard. Are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> All right, Garrett, how many did you get? Garrett managed to take out six, whereas I only took out three. That's kind of pathetic. I won, so what do I get? Okay, you can pick out the set for the next challenge. This is one of the most popular LEGO Star Wars sets ever. It comes with clone troopers who have to defeat these battle droids using their sweet rides. Hold up, I think it's missing something. Dude, you're right. For this challenge, we need to help the clones by integrating as many spring-loaded shooters onto their vehicles. Because right now, all they have are wimpy stud shooters, and these battle droids are looking pretty feisty. Yeah, so let's just start, bro. First of all, I'm probably gonna take off this little front section right here, and then I might put one or two of these in there if they fit. I'm gonna attach some of them to the toes here. <laughs> Now at some point throughout the building process, we started to get a little carried away. Dude, I didn't think you were gonna be able to use this many. Maybe we should've got more. <laughs> I got some cannons as fins right here, and I got cannons on all sides. Yeah, I'm just trying to use up any bit of empty space. It's looking promising. And after a few more minutes of building and loading them up, the upgraded vehicles were now complete. And now, the clones are ready to battle some droids. Uh -oh. But forget this set. Because now we're gonna build something using only the spring-loaded shooters. So for this challenge, we'll each be given 50 spring-loaded shooters with the task of building something that hopefully resembles something. I'm gonna try and build a brick-built minifigure, kind of like the Giant Man and the Stone Warrior from Ninjago. I basically have no plan. I'm just gonna build as I go. I'm just gonna wing it. We're gonna see how it turns out. <laughs> I have no idea where to even start. I don't even know if this is gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this challenge being more difficult than anticipated, we kept building and over time we started making some progress. And soon enough, our creations were complete. Let's check him out. Here's my minifigure. Honestly, it looks more like a Minecraft character. He's got four eyes. And like most of you guys at home, and myself included, he can be a bit shallow on the inside. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think his name should be. I was thinking Jeffrey, but I'm not really feeling that anymore. Here's what I came up with. It's just a weird shape, but if you look at it at the right angle, it can look like a lit Star Wars hallway or the Leaning Tower of Pizza. I don't really know. Now this next challenge is unlike any other we've done yet. Using a bunch of long plates, we built a custom 2x130 stud brick and attached 100 spring-loaded shooters to it. And after loading it and setting it up in our makeshift firing range, the challenge was ready. We're each gonna have to start the clock, fire all the spring-loaded shooters off individually until we reach the end. So if you accidentally fire off two or more, you're disqualified. And whoever has the shortest amount of time will be the winner. So in order to win this challenge, I'm gonna be trying to use my hands as if I'm playing the piano and go across as fast as possible. This is a game of risk and reward, so I'm just gonna take it slow and hope Garrett gets disqualified. Hopefully I win. Garrett was up first, but was already having second thoughts. My original strategy, I do not think is gonna work at it because I didn't realize how close they were together. I might have to improvise. What'd you get for a time? 33.58 seconds. It's not amazing, but I'll take it. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Dang it! 
Dang it, I fired two! <laughs> this is the second challenge I've lost today. This sucks. Nice work, Garrett. Thank you. And now it's time for the final most ambitious challenge of them all. As you've seen throughout the video, all you have to do to fire one of these things off is push down on the back of the missile. So one of my favorite things to do is stack a bunch of them together and fire them all at once. So for this final challenge, we're going to take this concept to the extreme and make a tower that can fire 100 spring-loaded shooters. Alright, well, we got to come up with a new method here. This challenge required some ingenuity. So after a few minutes, we came up with a new design incorporating Technic pieces. So to make the structure stronger, we're going to be adding these Technic bricks in between each shooter. And if we insert these blue Technic pins, then we can use one of these Technic lift arms. And now it is locked in place, not going anywhere. All that was left to do was build a bunch of these tower segments and stack them together. Here we go. It actually might be almost as long as me. The tower was looking pretty good so far. The problem is that it, it breaks really easily, so we're gonna have to use the leftover lift arms to lock each section together. Hopefully it'll stand up. However, reinforcing the tower ended up leading to its own set of complications. But it's not gonna like, well, let's let's attach to the building every Wait, that's what I was saying. Like, oh, yeah, you're right. Phase, so we... And even after getting back on track, it just felt like every problem we solved was replaced by two more. It still doesn't hold together that great in some places. Also, we're kind of running out of these Technic beams. We're literally one short. We may need to rework this whole tower. Hopefully we can make it happen. So we stripped the lift arms from the tower and rearranged them in such a way to secure everything more evenly and use less parts. Now it was time to stand it up. Let's see how this, this works. Oh no. Oh my goodness. This is I ridiculous. Was, oh shoot. That is so tall. This is gonna be so much fun to shoot. I don't think this is gonna hold. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that. The tower was just too tall and too wobbly. In an act of complete desperation, we slightly modified the tower in order to tie it to the duct above. What? This is kind of our only hope. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to uh, like cut the tower in half, basically. <laughs> it's already off its base. No, all right, it's not gonna work. We're just gonna have to build it half the height, unfortunately. Let's do half height, double stack. We had been doing spring-loaded shooter challenges all day, and by now it was nearly midnight. However, we still had time to try out one last tower design. We've got the basic structure for the new tower planned out. We doubled it up, and there's a spring-loaded shooter every other brick high. And we use these blue 2x4 plates so it locks it all together. And we're gonna reinforce it once again with the Technic lift arms. But despite our efforts, our last design crumbled to bits, which meant we had failed at the final challenge. Completely out of time and ideas, I had no choice but to pack everything up and go home defeated.